the best thing I've ever read. A matcha. Kinda crazy. <laughs> I'm like. The anxiety that books put me through. I'm gonna cry. I finished. I think I'm starting at the five star feeling. Ozzy, really? Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, make sure to subscribe. So, as you can see what I have with me today, I am starting the Throne of Glass series. I am so excited. I have already read Akatar. This is one of the most popular fantasy series other than, I would say, Akatar. I only have half of it right now. I'm gonna get the other half once I finish these. I wanted the new covers. I just think they're so beautiful. So first off, when talking about the series, a big component, I guess, is the reading order. I have heard so many ways I've done a ton of research on TikTok to see what way I want to read it. I've seen three ways total. This is the chronological order, so it's Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, and then Air of Fire. And then I've also seen it this way when you read Assassin's Blade after all of these. I've heard that it kind of spoils things and doesn't leave you as shocked about some things when you read it first. So, but I've also seen it this way. Reading Assassin's Blade after Crown of Midnight, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with with Throne of Glass. Look at that beautiful cover. I do not know anything about this series. All I know is that she's an assassin. That's literally it. Don't even know her name. I don't want to know anything. I want to be surprised by everything. I don't know. I just like going into books blind. I did that with Akatar and I felt every single twist. I didn't know anything about what Akatar was about. Yeah. So let's start Throne of Glass. <laughs> Sixty percent through it and I really just want to finish it today it has been taking me so long to read this book it's not cuz the book but it is a tiny bit I have other things I really need to get done and so I just have not had time the whole first half of this book felt so slow to me and like this book is so hyped up so I know the series is gonna be good yesterday I read a lot I'm on page 273 and like I didn't even finish the chapter I'm like in the middle of a chapter I can tell that there's a lot of things I don't know I'm not regretting my reading order I think I definitely need to start with this instead of Assassin's Blade because I can tell once I read Assassin's Blade everything will like click and it will be more emotional. She kind of like hints at things in her past and since I haven't read the other book obviously I don't know what she's talking about and it's like I'm just kind of confused. It starts out Selena is an assassin and she's like the best assassin there is. She was caught somehow and put into this prison which is also kind of like a camp and she was whipped. She was basically kind of tortured and she had to like do tasks every day like in prison they do work and stuff she gets approached by the crown prince and she thinks that she's gonna die it turns out he wants her to compete in this competition to be the king's champion the captain of the guard his name is kale the prince is dorian the king in this book has taken over so many different countries and he's just trying to conquer everything and he's outlawed all magic. They all go to the castle of glass and the competition is there. They're going through these tests each week and meanwhile there is an evil in the castle. Some of the champions keep dying and she is visited by a spirit of like a past queen. It's kind of weird she's like you need to find out the evil in the castle and you need to become the king's champion it doesn't feel like emotionally heavily right now i understand that it's a start of a series so it's not going to be a ton of depth and we don't know a ton of depth yet but it's like and so i think that's why it's taking me forever to get in because i feel like i can't connect with the characters right now with all that said there has been a little bit connections kind of like romance i can't really tell dorian the prince keeps visiting selena but there's also kale where he's the captain of the guard and he like gave her a ring. I feel like he likes her, but that's kind of all been happening. You find out when she was training to become an assassin, his name was Sam and he was killed. She was betrayed and that's how she got in jail. One thing that's really weird to me, so she's an assassin and I feel like they don't portray her as like as heartless as you would think an assassin would be. I'm about to keep reading. I'm really confused right now 
with it so it's been a few hours later and i finished the throne of glass and the ending got a lot better i really liked it then they had their final duel this other girl i hadn't talked about basically put poison in selena's wine before the competition so when selena was fighting kane in the final duel basically losing the duel and about to die she ended up beating kane so it kind of revealed something at the end of the book it wasn't about the competition it wasn't about all that the king and the duke are talking it's like from the king's point of view and it explains how he knows all about the marks the duke had been influencing caltaine's emotions and like him and the king were talking about it at the end i don't know if they've been using the marks or what they've been using i'm still confused on a lot of it i'm gonna give this book i like feel bad giving a sarah j mass book this rating i want to say two and a half stars but i'm gonna say three because it's sarah j mass like i feel so <laughs> Okay, but bear with me. I'm going to explain, okay? The start was so slow to me. The whole first 200 pages was just her going through the trials, and it was just kind of boring. I can tell it's leading up to more. I guess the romance is just not as heavily packed in yet. I mean, it just felt like Dorian, like, was instantly transfixed by her and instantly just wanted to, like... He was in love with her and it was like there was no depth. I liked her and Kale because it kind of felt like a slow burn a little bit. I like the characters. I'm not connecting with them as much yet. Once that happens, I think I'll really fall in love with the series. I'm probably going to start this tonight. Please don't hate me for my rating on this. I like literally feel bad for rating it a three. I'm on page... 48 right now i'm in the middle of a chapter book has started off pretty good selena is now the king's champion and so she is having to do his bidding basically she's actually been kind of letting the people that she's on mission to assassinate she's been letting them have a choice of, of staging a crime scene or and fleeing or she'll actually have to you know and then last night i stayed up pretty late reading nahemia and Elena, the past queen, and they're talking. She's like, Dorian isn't ready and Selena's not ready, but we're gonna have to make Selena ready. And so Nehemia's like, that's gonna push her over the edge. I don't know if she's gonna come back. I thought that Nehemia was gonna kill Kale. I thought that's what's gonna happen. And I kept reading on and then Kale's got, is captured and stuff. And so I was like, okay, well, he's not dead. So maybe it was just him getting taken and that's what, what it was. So Kale gets captured by that rebel group so Selena's like freaking out. Archer's like, wait, wait, stop. Like, hear me out. And he's like, he explains that Nehemia was helping them organize and like she's been trying to help them raise up an army and, so, and all this. He was like, this is the only way we could get your attention. And Selena's like, well, then where is she if she's y'all's leader, basically? And he's like, ask Kale. And she's like, what do you mean? But Kale was told by the king, keep it a secret because Nehemia had like a threat against her life. He was supposed to give her extra, extra protection, but to keep it a secret, don't tell anyone about the threat. Kale was like, I wasn't supposed to question her. It was supposed to be the king, but it's not questioning that they were going to be doing tonight, was it, Kale? Archer's like, I just sent my men to go get her, but... I think it's going to be too late by the time we get there. Oh, it's so bad. And I was like, instantly, I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. And you read in the next chapter, and Selena's like, she is racing to the castle, trying to get to Nehemia, and she gets to the room, and there's blood everywhere. All of her guards are dead. And then Nehemia's laying on the bed. Selena's freaking out because this is like, that was her closest friend. It makes it seem like it was Kale's fault because I know that's what is about to happen. And so I know that Selena is about to freak out at him and probably break up with him. Her and Kale just got good together and then this happened. I'm gonna keep reading part two. I think that Selena might have powers. I kind of figured that in the first book because it said the ancient ageless drum her heartbeat pulse through her ears when it was talking about dorian and his powers it said ancient drum or something it said ancient something like inside him so i feel like that's foreshadowing or alluding to her having powers I literally thought that she killed Kale for a second, but it said that she just like stopped. And I thought that I thought that she killed him. So I was freaking out. 
Audacity, okay, I understand that Selena is dangerous and she's an assassin like she's the best whatever But her best friend she just found murdered by the king by whatever And so she has the right to be mad at Kale. I didn't she doesn't need to like hurt him too bad But she could have a fight with him. She was literally about to kill him I mean she was and so I understand the guards like knocking her out or stopping her or whatever but then they put her in a cell and Kale's like don't touch her He's like, I don't trust her with anything. And he's like, he doesn't even want her to have a jacket. I'm going to keep reading, but that makes me so mad. Like, that audacity that Kale did that. He's going to be your enemy now if he's just locking her up and doing all that. At one point, he literally loved her. And then now he's like, oh, I'm just going to lock her up. Even though it's my fault that her best friend's dead. Like, Hey guys, so I finished Crown of Midnight tonight. I am going to rate this one, I think, four stars. So she opens a portal to like the afterworld kind of. And Hemia comes up, but she's like, you shouldn't have done this. I thought you were smarter than this. Archer is this leader of the rebel group. He turns out that you can't trust him. And he wants the work he's for himself. Selena like tries to manipulate him into believing that she's on board with that but during all that the portal is left open to that other world this creature comes out of it and starts like going after her and then dorian's there it's going after dorian and then kale is there and it goes after kale and also the dog's there <laughs> takes the dog into the other world kale goes into the portal and like it's gonna go retrieve the dog and she also like runs in there and when she goes to the portal this is what's crazy. She turns into a fae. So apparently she's been fae the whole time. And since magic left 10 years ago, left their country or whatever, she has not been able to transform into her fae self because the magic left. Slayed the creature. She got her dog. She got Kale. And they all went back. That all happens. And that's at the very end of the book. Her and Kale had a talk. Then he comes up with this idea to send her off to this other place because there's also fae, like hidden fae and then he wants to send her to this other kingdom disguised as going to assassinate these people she's leaving and kale's like you understand why i did this right and because so you can escape she's like i can't escape i'm gonna return i can't explain it all now she whispers a date in his ear and it was the day that her parents died the last chapter and he goes up to her rooms goes through all these books he sees all these like genealogy books he goes to that date in them turns out that the people died they were the king and queen of Terrasen, and then their daughter wasn't found. He figures out that she is Aelin and she's the lost heir of Terrasen. She has the power if she can group all these rebels up to raise an army against the king. It just got good and it's about to go on, but it is now time for me to read Assassin's Blade. I will update you guys when I'm starting Assassin's Blade. It is now nighttime and I read a little bit of Assassin's Blade last night. I think I only got like two chapters. I was so tired. I was just thinking about like what the ending's gonna be like and it's probably gonna be of Sam's death and so I'm kind of scared. Wish me luck. It is a few days later. I got a matcha. I put um, hazelnut in it this time. I normally just do either vanilla or sugar-free vanilla. I'm hoping it tastes good. Mmm, that's so good. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit and read, so. I don't know if I wanna put on fantasy music. I think I'm just gonna read in the silence. I think there's five novellas in this. I am on the one in the desert, but the first one was about her going to this place with this pirate, freed a bunch of slaves, and it's about her and Sam, and she kind of starts to really, like, care for Sam there, but it's not a lot of depth about it yet. The next one is about her and a healer, and she's just, like, teaching this healer how to protect herself. That one was really short, and... I honestly didn't really like it, but I don't know. Maybe the uh, girl in that is going to be a character sometime in the future. And then now I'm on the one with her and the silent assassins in the red desert. Selena is kind of spoiled. Like, thinks that she deserves to train with, the, like, the master. She thinks she deserves it. Like, all this. Yeah, it's a little annoying. Let's get to reading. <laughs> It is now nighttime. I'm gonna be going to bed soon, but I do wanna read a little bit more tonight. When I'm thinking back on the other books, I'm <laughs> kinda disappointed, and I'm scared that if it continues how those are, 
that I'm not gonna like the series. I just wanna document that now because I'll probably end up like loving it like crazy. And I've also heard people say that they absolutely love Assassin's Blade, like it's one of their favorite books. It has, I have not enjoyed it. First novella wasn't that bad. The one with her and Sam, it felt like it could be a chapter. Good morning guys, it's the next day, but it's super like rainy and dreary outside. So definitely gonna be reading all today and editing. <laughs> I finished this novella and went on to the last one. It nothing happened. So I'm like, what? The mission, like nothing happened on the mission. Like there was stuff she didn't know, but like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so scared. Um, it's making me so anxious. I finished Assassin's Blade literally like a minute ago. My first thoughts on it is it may have been a little too long. Her and Sam pretty much get together and they're going on like their last mission she's paying off her debt and she's paying off sam's debt Aaron finds out about it and he's like you don't need to do this they're like planning it for a couple days like they have it figured out to a t how they're gonna do it sam is supposed to come home and he doesn't come home after the mission then Arabin shows up at her house after a day of she's looking everywhere for him and he's like i'm sorry they left him at the guild whatever and she goes and looks at the body and like he was tortured for multiple hours his body is barely recognizable so sad she just instantly kind of went numb and like just turned mad obviously wants revenge and she is like okay i'm gonna go after them and she makes all this plan and it's like a solid plan and she goes and it's a trap and so she gets captured and that's how she ends up going to Endovier. I didn't think it was gonna tell us who betrayed her. So Arabin's the one who betrayed her and he did that because he didn't like her with Sam and he didn't like her leaving. That's how this ended. I think I'm gonna give this one 3.5 and I'm gonna be starting Air Fire next and I know that's where the story takes a turn so I'm really excited. See you guys when I start Air Fire. I'm now on page 168. Kinda crazy. I feel like the romance is starting to build a little bit because Selena has literally ran away. Now she's in a cave and I'm pretty sure that some creature is fixing to attack her. So. Yeah, Rowan saved her, of course. Okay. <laughs> My friend looks so big or anything. I think they're starting to, like, become, like, not become, I don't know, become friends, I guess, a little bit. He was trying to get her to shift again. He was, like, teasing her, pulling her hair, like, pulling her braid. And she slapped me. He's like, oh, you better run now. And I'm like, they're starting to, like, be friendly, I guess. Okay, they're running for, through the forest now. They're running through the forest now. And why do I picture the scene where Edward is like running in twilight in like the forest? And like, isn't like, I think like everything's a blur around him. He's running with Bella. Bro, that's what I'm thinking of. I'm so scared. So literally, I am almost finished with the book. The King has he has sorcia dorian adian i think that's how you say it and kale all in a room and he's like someone's been feeding rebels information about my plans and stuff if dorian doesn't tell who's been doing it they're gonna kill sorcia and i think kale is fixing to sacrifice himself i think that he's fixing to be like it was me I, it's gonna, i'm about to turn the page i don't think it's gonna be i think he's gonna do that because he's like i gotta get adian out let's see what happens i'm really scared bro i know no bro oh i'm so scared okay so kale was about to say it but then adian starts speaking no if adian dies i'm actually gonna i'm gonna cry he reminds me of Jax from well it's one of working hard he's like you want a spy you want a traitor and then he threw his black ring on the floor he's like there i am you want to know why the captain and i were meeting is because your captain figured it out that i've been working with one of the rebels he's been blackmailing me for information <laughs> i'm not ready for this <laughs> i'm gonna cry Now he's saying that he's gonna keep Aiden alive so if Aelin wants to come for him. Oh no. 
she was a rebel. Sorsha was a rebel. Or something. She was sending notes from the castle. One, she's like telling Dorian that she loves him. Bro, Dorian's magic is about to go crazy. They just severed her head. He is about to shatter the whole glass castle, y'all. Oh no! Kale just drew so Oh no, Kale's about to go crazy too. Oh no. Hey guys, so I finally finished um, Air of Fire. I really like how Rowan and Selena's relationship kind of started to build. I love how it ended with them being, I think it's Karenon. I am going to give Air of Fire 4.5. It's still not that five star feeling, but I definitely loved it. I love the book. Kale and all of them are still at the castle. And at the end, so sad. Aiden goes to the dungeon. Dorian's left there. And they put... A collar on him literally possesses him with like they're called the Vogue. I started into this now she goes by Aelin she goes back to Riftold she sees Kale I knew that her and Kale weren't gonna be a thing anymore but I still thought I still liked Kale and I thought they could be like friends he literally cannot stand that they have powers okay Kale like you loved her but then you just gonna be like that also another little development is Lysandra I think that's how you say your name? I might be wrong. She was like a courtier. Aelin and Lysandra basically become friends. And it's just so... I love their friendship. I feel like there's so much I like. Okay, it's the next day and I'm reading more of Queen of Shadows. Y'all gonna cry. It's the reunion I've been waiting for with Adian and Aelin. And it's literally so cute because they're like brother and sister. I'm almost halfway through. I'm really liking this book. I think I'm starting to get the five star feeling. Okay, one, her and Adian's relationship have me laughing. Her and Rowan when they unite and like the way they talk and the way she's like teasing him. I'm starting to love the series. literally bro he thought and she's a queen and like the audacity that he has like <laughs> keep going keep digging a hole for yourself bro some of these people got taken to this place whatever she's like did you know that like literally just letting him know and then she's like they couldn't have gotten far you could take a team save them or whatever and he's like i know i could she's like are you going to and he's like did you bring me here to prove a point about my uselessness dude chill what the oh my gosh that's literally so cute adian's been like cooped up in her apartment for a while and he wants to get out so they go to like get a drink and when they're going back to the apartment guess who shows up Rowan. and she like ran up to him and like hugged him it's so cute. I was so scared that Rowan was going to talk about the blood oath. And I'm pretty sure he's fixing to say it. Yeah, Rowan says, I'm blood sworn to you, which means several things. One of which being that I don't particularly care for the questioning of others, even your cousin. Adian's getting mad. He's like, you let him do what? Y'all, some crazy stuff happened. She fought Manon but saved her. Rowan got shot with an arrow. I'm loving this book. I love when Rowan and Aelin like talk in their head or like with their eyes. Uh, she like had planned all this stuff to kind of frame Arabin for Adian's escape. She really did that. They were about to kiss and Rowan stopped it and he was like, don't do that, don't do that. And she's like, I'm sorry. And he was like, good. And then left, bro. And then it skipped his point of view. I better get a point of view of what he's thinking after that. Okay, Arabin put this one of the black rings on Aelin. And I was freaking out. I was like, oh no, oh no. Like, she's going to have to obey everything. And she started doing it. And I was like, how is no one noticing? How is no one noticing? They get home. And like, where no one can see them. And then he's like, she's a slave awaiting orders. 
and then he like calls her name but she pulls off the ring okay so it didn't work i was literally about to freak out okay so they finally found out everything that's happening with the witches and in the fairy and gap or something like that oh no oh no lorkin's back <laughs> I thought Rowan was about to hug her and cover her. No, it was freaking Lorcan. She turned around to Lorcan. Hey guys, so I'm on vacation right now. I finished Queen of Shadows. I'm going to be giving it a five star. I absolutely loved this book. I've heard people talk a lot about like the found family and I think it was just so cute. And I'm not ready to tandem read if I'm being honest. <laughs> Kale is getting more feeling in his leg. Him and Irene, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for them to kiss or something. I was watching Destiny Sisters video a while back and she was talking about how she hates when like the main character loses their powers and she was like that happens in one book if you know you know and I just felt like she was talking about Throne of Glass maybe she wasn't but I felt like she was yeah I feel like that's gonna happen to her and she's gonna lose it I literally only have a few chapters left of this 10 chapters of Empire Storms okay so they're going to find the lock and they're basically all fixing to meet up like Lorcan and Elite are fixing to kind of meet them. There's like 500 Ilkin. Like she had to go deep into her power. Adian, he was like saying how there had to be a price. Nameless is my price. That's what she said. And that's what I'm like, that's what I'm like still confused about. Because I don't, I'm confused because I don't understand what it's talking about. Been waiting like 10 chapters to figure it out. And I still can't piece it together. And I feel like maybe I'm just dumb. They're fixing to leave after they found the lock. There's like a ton of ships when they come over like this hill. It turns out to be Ansel. The assassin that she met in the Red Desert. And so it was so cool to like see that full circle moment. And so at first everyone's mad. But they're like, wow, Aelin like did this, whatever. So she has basically this whole navy now it goes back to nezrin they end up getting <laughs> captured by these spiders but they tell nezrin all this crazy stuff about mave and how mave isn't just a queen of the fae she's a vowed queen and so she actually came earlier i was talking about she kept saying nameless is my price the mark that was on Aelin's head like when she was fighting the duel a mark that means nameless yeah Elena basically messed up in the past to like defeat all of them to close the word gate you have to literally use all of your power in all of your life Aelin's gonna have to die to lock them away the anxiety that books put me through sometimes she's like going up against May kind of they're not really like fighting like <sighs> Aelin was like, why are you doing this? Maeve is like, well, I can't very well let you sacrifice yourself to forge a new lock, can I? Not when you already have what I want, and I have known for a very, very long time that you would give me what I want, Aelin Galathinius, and I've taken the steps towards ensuring that. And I'm scared that something's gonna happen with Rowan. Haven't you figured it out why I wanted your mother to bring you to me? Why I demanded such things of you this spring? But in my dark power, I saw a glimmer of the future. I saw that Mala's power would surge again. Who you were, what you were. I saw who you loved. I saw your mate. She was talking about Rowan earlier, and she was like, yeah, I've known what he is or whatever. Since they were carrying on, I was like, nah, they gotta be mates too. And I didn't know when you would be born, but when Prince Rowan Whitethorn came into this world when he came of age and I knew what I would have to do. It was so easy to tug on the right psychic thread that day Rowan saw Lyria at the market. So Lyria wasn't even his mate. Oh, cause I thought you could have two mates though. I thought you really could. But Lyria wasn't even his mate? What? No one ever asked how those enemy forces came to pass by his mountain home. Maeve is the one that did that to Lyria and his child. You were born, whenever you'd come of age, I'm sure that your paths crossed and you'd take one look at each other and I'd have you by the throat. But how does that make sense when Rowan's on the ships? Like, she can't get to him right now. So they're taking her and they literally were whipping her. I hope there's some plan that they have. From man's point of view and she's like, she didn't dare look back, didn't dare give that ancient cold eyed one hint that Aelin didn't possess the the word keys, that Aelin had slipped them both into Manon's pocket when she nudged her. She stripped the blood oath also from Lorcan, but my thing is why, like, she doesn't kill them. She's getting rid of all their lands and everything that they've ever owned in Dornell, but still, like, why are you, be like, why are you begging for it back? Because they all wanted the oath broken, so I'm like, why are you i don't understand why they're literally like begging for it back because lorkin can now be with elide and he doesn't have to serve maid gabriel can now be with his son and he doesn't have to the only one that 
isn't as generous and I feel so bad for him because he's the one who's always wanted to be away from him but like that's so dumb on May's part to just let them go because she could control them do y'all want to know what this man just said this is giving me Dance of Thieves vibes. Bro. Okay, this is the part where Rowan's like, where is Aelin? Where is Aelin? He comes and he goes, where is my wife? And Lurkin starts crying. <gasps> and so he's king. No way they were actually going to do this. Rowan's like, Aelin would die to force the new lock to seal the keys into the gate. But no one, no. No one but us. Not while you wore her skin for the rest of your life. <gasps> what? This is crazy. Okay, it's the silent assassins from the red desert. So she literally getting the whole continent together. Okay guys, I finished this book. They're basically all splitting up again. <laughs> Prince Rowan, White Thorn, Galathinius, concert of Queen Terrasen began the hunt to find his wife. Today is a special moment. Now I'm on the last stretch. This is literally the biggest book I've ever read in my entire life. A thousand page book and it's the last one. Kind of mesh. Tower of Dawn and Empire of Storms is really good. All the couples are kind of broken up right now. I'll catch you guys when I'm reading this. <laughs> I got lots of here with me. He's tired. It's crazy that I'm getting towards the end of this video. I feel like I've been filming forever. I have been. I've been filming for three months about. It's been a while since I caught up. I'm at the end and she just sealed the gate basically. Y'all, I was wondering how people said that Akhtar was like related to this and shown in it. Like I could literally cry because of what I just read it. She's like passing through and she's like describing all of the worlds that she sees. She passed through a world of snow-capped mountains under shining stars. She said that and I was like, wait, could that like be Akhtar? It goes on to say, passed over one of those mountains where a winged male, we say it, stood beside a heavily pregnant female gazing at those very stars, Fae. They were Fae, but this was not her world. The winged male, beautiful beyond reason, snapped his head toward her as she arched across the starry sky. He lifted a hand, a blast of dark power like a gentle summer night slammed into her, not to attack, but to slow her down. A wall, a shield that she tore and plunged through, but it slowed her. That winged male's power slowed her just enough. <laughs> that's literally Resand doing that. And that's literally Resand in A Court of Silver Flames because I'm pretty sure, or maybe, Frost and Starlight. That's when they're at like the stuff. Is it called the Starlight? Well, I don't know. Like when they see the stars and like you remember they got like hit in the face with a star and it was like glowing on them. The best thing I've ever read. Okay, I'm gonna go cry now. Finally finished Throne of Glass. Obviously, it's a five star. I'll probably come back tomorrow and give my actual final thoughts. Hey guys, so I finished the Throne of Glass series. Did the reading order of reading Assassin's Blade third after Crown of Midnight. I don't regret it. I don't think it would have meant as much to me about Sam's death and like their relationship if I had read it first because I was not connected to Selena at all. I didn't really know anything about her. As you saw, like I was like not really liking the series, especially in the first book. I thought it was kind of boring. And then once we got to Assassin's Blade, I did not like the first novellas. I was like, why are these in here? Why do these matter? It's so crazy like thinking back because once we got to Tandem reading, I think Alid and Irene were introduced in these. I know Irene was, but it was just such like a full circle moment like seeing how everything was like connected and i absolutely love that love her and rowan this series was amazing i loved it towards the end it was honestly getting like really chaotic not because of like 
the fantasy elements were too hard to understand there was just so many things going on at once which i still liked because i feel like i was connecting with every single character because there was getting point of views from every single character now i'm going to move on to a little bit of unpopular opinions maybe first i don't really know how i feel about manon and dorian obviously i kind of like them together I feel like at the end it didn't really give us enough of them i still like their relationship it's just like i don't i don't even know like how i feel about it that's just kind of how it is another thing that I wish we would have had more of is Adian and Aelin when they met after a long time and it was like this cute reunion and they were just like basically like brother and sister it was like that happened for a few chapters but then they kept getting split up like that whole relationship just felt like it like dissolved and like they weren't even worried about each other anymore and i really wanted them to have like a brother and sister moment more one of my favorite relationships was lorcan and elite so like, i don't know they kind of reminded me of Rhysand and Feyre a little bit lastly i wanted something that was going to be like far in the future as the epilogue kind of explaining like a little snippet of them having kids like all of them having kids and like all the kids getting together all the fa like found family getting together could have just been like this big dinner or something and it would have been amazing i just wanted to see that so bad so i would have loved that but that is my final thoughts on the series a five star series and i highly recommend i hope you guys like this video and i will see you when i see you